Hello, and welcome to my tutorial on how to show a web page on top of your iOS Unity app, while still allowing the user to see and interact with a portion of your Unity UI. For this tutorial, I'm going to change my approach. Instead of reading the lines of code to be added, I'm just going to review the changes and explain in plain English what each line or block is doing. I hope this new format is more friendly than my previous approach. As before, this tutorial assumes a reasonable knowledge of Unity, C Sharp, Xcode, and Objective-C. Download the source code for this tutorial from github.com slash cwdtech slash iOS webview. The plugin has been extended from the previous versions by adding a method that will create an iOS WK webview. Use WK webview in place of UI webview, as Apple recommend no longer using UI webview since iOS 8. In order to let a portion of the Unity view stay visible and interactive, we'll adjust the frame of the web view to push it down by the height of our button strip. This web view will then be added to the root view of object used by the Unity app. We'll also add a method to remove this layout from the app, returning the full screen to Unity. Let's get started by loading up this project in Unity and reviewing the changes to the scene. The plug-in test object on main camera has two new public vars, and these hook up to the web panel and the button strip. We'll go into detail on how these are used a little later. There is now a browse button in the middle of the scene. This is a standard UI button with the on click event hooked up to the open web view tapped method of the plugin test object on main camera. There is a panel object called web panel, which contains all the elements displayed when the browse button is tapped. It is disabled by default and enabled when the open web view tapped method is triggered. It's a bright pink so you can see it momentarily before iOS covers it with the WK web view. The first child is button strip an image object that occupies the width of the display and is anchored at the top edge. Its height is set to 50 UI pixels. The code will convert this height to screen pixels by using the scale factor of the parent canvas. In addition to a text object, the button strip contains the close button. This button object is anchored to the top right corner of the button strip and has its own click event hooked up to the close web view tapped on the plugin test object. Double click the plugin test script to open it in Visual Studio and review the changes that have been made to it. You'll see two new external method declarations that will be implemented in the Objective-C plugin code. The first takes a string of the URL to be loaded and the number of pixels we need to reserve at the top of the screen. The second closes and discards the web view. The supplied callback will be triggered when the Objective-C code completes. I'm reusing the callback signature that already exists in the class and while I could have created a new one, there's no real need. There are two new public variables that will hold references to the new UI objects. As already mentioned, these will reference the web panel and button strip objects. Scroll down until you see the two new methods that are basically wrappers for our iOS plugin code. They both check to ensure we're actually running on an iOS device before calling the external functions. The open web view method takes a string containing the URL to load and an integer with the number of screen pixels to push the web view down by. The static method close web view handler is called by the plugin code directly when the web view is closed. We mark the method with the aot.monop invoke callback attribute so the compiler knows to build this method with the appropriate code signature, allowing it to be invoked by unmanaged code. The method itself will invoke the function stored in the static var on close web view and pass on the int parameter. Anytime you invoke a function variable, always check to ensure it's not null, otherwise you'll cause an exception. We set it to null after we use it, so there's no chance of it being called out of order accidentally. The method closeWebView requires a reference to a method as a parameter, and that method requires a single int as a parameter itself. The reference is stored in the static var on closeWebView for use when the plugin calls closeWebViewHandler. Note that in this case, if we're not on an iOS platform, we invoke the callback with a zero, which will cause the web panel to hide itself when running in the editor. The method OpenWebViewTapped will be hooked into the Unity event system and called when the user taps on the browse button. This method gets a reference to the canvas object that is above the button strip in the hierarchy. We need to convert the button strip height from UI pixels to screen pixels. To do this, multiply the button strip's height by the scale factor of the canvas object. We cast this to an int after adding 0.5 to the result, causing it to be rounded up. The game object of the web panel is set to active, which causes the entire panel to be displayed 
and then call the open web view method passing our URL and the calculated height. Close web view tapped is another method we'll hook up to a button using the event system. This time it will be called when the user clicks on the close button. We pass an anonymous function into the close web view method and the function just deactivates the web panel which causes it to become hidden. At this point switch back to Unity and click on the my plugin file in plugins iOS. Check the inspector at this point to notice a small but very important change. You can see that the checkbox to include the WebKit library has been set. Without this, our code will not build. Double click the My Plugin file to open it in Xcode. Let's review the changes that have been made to it. The first change imports the required WebKit header into the file. This allows us to use the various WK WebView and associated methods. The delegate protocol has been added to the end of the My Plugin interface declaration, which lets us use this object as a delegate for the web view. There's also a var to hold the pointer to the WK web view we'll create. We need this reference in order to remove and close it later. Scroll to the bottom of the file to see the C wrappers that will allow Unity to make calls into our plugin. iOS show web view must match the extern static declaration in the C sharp code in name and in parameter count and type. The C sharp type string will be automatically converted to a C style string when passed to unmanaged code which is why we use the const char star as the matching type. After logging a debug message, we call directly into the plugin object method, passing the same parameters we received. The iOS hide web view must also match the declaration in the C sharp code, but this time it just passes a callback parameter to our plugin object method. Scroll up to the show web view method of the plugin. The first thing we do is make a call to an exposed Unity function that returns the view object that Unity is using to draw into. We then convert the C style string to an NS string object using a utility method and adjust the pixel space to convert it from screen pixels to UI kit pixels by dividing the supplied value by the scale factor for the device's main screen. Create a default WK web view configuration object. You can use this to control how your web view handles various tasks and user actions, but for this example, the default behavior is fine. Grab the frame from the main view we set up earlier. Usually this is a full screen frame, but now I shift the origin.y value down by the scaled pixel shift value and reduce the height by the same amount. Create a WK web view with the updated frame and the default configuration object and set the delegate to this plugin object by using self. Create an NS URL request object using the provided URL string and then start the web view loading from this URL. Finally, add the web view to the Unity view object so it will be layered above the Unity view. The hide web view method removes the web view from its parent if it exists, and then sets the var holding reference to it to nil. It then triggers the callback method with a one as a parameter if it's not nil. If there's no existing web view, then the callback is just triggered with a zero. Running the scene in Unity will let you confirm the buttons work as expected. However, no actual web view is displayed, as that will only work when running on an iOS platform. When the project is built and run on an iOS platform, click on the Browse button to bring up the web view. You can see in the log output the past pixel space value and the effect that the scaling factor has for the current screen. On an iPhone 8 device, the scaling will be 2, so the 111 is rounded down to 55. On the iPhone 8 Plus device, the scaling is 3, so the 184 pixel requirement is rounded down to 61. I hope you find this tutorial useful. You can use this to show a help page or information page directly in your Unity app that is either stored as an HTML file or is downloaded from a website. You could add more controls to the Unity canvas to allow you to navigate forwards and backwards and maybe jump to a specific URL. As always, you can follow me on Twitter at CWGTech or check out my blog at www.cwgtech.com. Please feel free to leave any comments or suggestions below and let me know how you customize this technique for your own purposes. I'm interested to get any opinion on this slightly different tutorial format. Let me know if you found it more useful or if it was harder to follow. Subscribe to get notified when I post a new tutorial and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.